the importance of a quality ball. Welcome back to Street Ball Strategies. So welcome to the palace. Go leave Limoncello in the chalice. Tap in Wonderland like Alice. Let's go, come on, let's go. Uh. All right, new ball. Wilson, NCAA replica game ball. First impressions. So this ball is made out of composite leather and it feels good. Uh, it feels soft as you would expect it to feel. Um, I, in all honesty, prefer the feel of rubber balls. Uh, just I, I prefer that grippy, sticky kind of feel to rubber balls, but I also realize that, you know, those balls don't hold that texture for very long because they get worn down pretty easily. But in terms of this ball and the composite leather feel of it, it does feel good. It feels like good quality composite leather. The pebbling on the ball is not that great. Uh, it feels pretty flat uh, and that's not very functional. Uh, it, I mean it's there and you can feel it but you can also feel that it's kind of flat. Uh, it doesn't impact the ball tremendously and it's not something I would like constantly actively complain about but it is not as well pebbled as I would usually prefer. The reason I bought this ball was because of the grip channels, even though the grip channels are not that great. Uh, what I like about the grip channels on this ball, and I don't know if you guys can see or tell, but like the, so the black seams of the ball that are inside the grip channels, they kind of, on the, on the edges, on the seams of it, they kind of pop out a little bit. Uh, so that you can really get a good texture on your fingers when you feel them. Uh, I I like that. Uh, it's not necessary, but I do like it because it makes me, it gives me a little bit more reference points uh, to feel on the ball when I'm not, you know, looking at it when I'm not, when I'm not looking at the seams or I'm not looking at the group channels when I just sort of catch the ball. When I feel the seams, when I feel those, uh, the edges of those seams, it just gives me a little bit more uh, information as to where my fingers are on the ball and within the grip channels of the ball. So, so that aspect of this ball and these grip channels, I really do enjoy. I compared this ball to the Spalding Zio Indoor Outdoor Ball and while the Zio Ball had a better pebbling, this ball had slightly better grip channel. So I do prefer these grip channels over the uh, Spalding Zeo Ball. Again, not great. Uh, they're not as, as deep or pronounced as I would prefer, but uh, again, good enough. And so overall, uh, taking into account the composite leather feeling good and the pebbling being okay and the grip channels being mm, average, maybe a little bit above, average uh, I say my first impressions on this ball are pretty good uh, it feels really good it feels like a good quality ball it was about $30 uh, and I think that for that price tag this ball is worth it uh, it feels like a $30 ball it feels uh, like a good quality ball that would work as well as you would expect it to out on the court uh, just one problem Like I said, in theory, this should be a great ball that should perform well. Uh, the composite leather feels good, the pebbling on the ball is good enough, and the grip channels are average to above average. But here's the big problem with this ball. It doesn't bounce. Now let's be clear, this is not an issue with Wilson. It's not, an, it's not a Wilson problem, it's not a, a NCAA replica game ball problem, it's not a composite leather problem. So it's nothing to do with this brand or this line, it's just this one ball in particular happens to be a dud. No matter how much air I put into it or take out of there, no matter what I do to it, it just won't bounce, right? That, it has 
as much air as I can possibly get into it right now. I can't get any more air into this ball. It's heavier, way heavier than it should be, and it just, it just won't bounce. I would say that as far as like whatever an acceptable bounce on a ball should be, this ball has maybe 80% of an acceptable bounce. So in other words, it's not, it's not usable. It's not acceptable. You can't play and practice and train with this ball. It, if it doesn't bounce, it's not usable. So it's obvious that if a ball doesn't bounce, then it's not a good quality usable ball. But let me give you a little example of what I mean and how important it is. So I'll use my game as an example. And my game is super simple, always simple, very predictable because of that. And that's the way I like it. That's the way I engineered it to be because that's what works for me. So let's say I'm trying to penetrate the lane because that's a huge part of my game. And so I'm trying to get into the lane to either score with an easy layup or to draw the defense in and then kick out to an open teammate. And the way I do that, the way I've always done that, is just by using simple crossover moves. Nothing complicated, nothing fancy, just simple crossovers. So almost always my first move is a right to left crossover. Except for I'm trying to use as few crossovers as possible because I'm trying for quickness and efficiency. I don't, I don't care about dribbling the ball a lot. All I care about is getting the easiest shot as quickly as possible. So I don't care about how many dribbles it takes. I'm trying to do as few as possible. So the first move almost always is a right to left crossover. And that first move is not about speed. It's more about power. It's almost like a, it's like a jab step except for with a dribble. It's pretty much a jab step that just happens to have a dribble in it. So it's just about power, right? Power. Because it's a power move, the first dribble is a power dribble. It's a more of a, a vertical dribble. And because of that, it doesn't really matter that this ball doesn't bounce very well because I'm compensating for that by having a power dribble that's going mostly vertical from one hand to the other. So the fact that the ball doesn't bounce very well is not a problem in that first dribble because I'm making up for the lack of bounce with my power. So what happens with the first part of this move is when I catch the ball over here, because it's a power move and the ball is coming up vertically, I catch it back here and I let it spin in my hand as I'm bringing the ball up. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm giving myself time to read my defender to see if he's going to be off balance. If my defender is off balance, I'll have the ball about in this position it will be spinning in my hand, right? And as soon as I see that he's off balance, now as quickly as possible, I'm trying to move the ball, cross it back over to this hand to change directions. So this second dribble will be a speed dribble, right? The first dribble was a power dribble. Now crossing back over is going to be a speed dribble because I'm trying to change direction as quickly as I can. That means I catch the ball in this hand in about this position right now with a good quality ball that has uh, an average bounce that you would expect it to have I because there's so much speed coming to this hand with the ball what I can do is even if I catch it down here I can let it spin and I guide it up as it's spinning right and I do that again to buy myself time to see how the defense is going to react to the fact that I'm now open. So with a ball with a good bounce, the ball comes to this hand. I catch it. I have to catch it on the side, remember, because it's a lateral kind of dribble. I catch it on this hand. I let it spin. I guide it up so that my hand gets on top of the ball. Because with my hand now on top of the ball, it's like now I'm in a moving triple threat position. So now I can continue dribbling or I can pass or I can shoot but with this ball or with any ball that doesn't bounce very well when I come back to that second dribble and I catch it on the side right because the bounce of the ball stops right here there's no more momentum because the ball doesn't bounce well I, I can't let it spin and get my hand on top of the ball it stops right here because I can't get my hand on top of the ball I can't dribble correctly. The only dribble I could do from here would be 
to bring it back to another crossover, but why would I do that if I'm already open? There's no reason for a crossover. That means that this move has to stop right here because I bring the ball back over, catch it on the side, and I have to stop because I have to bring my hand over to the ball. If I have my hand over here on the ball, well now I have two hands on the ball and now I can't move. Right? So all I can do from here is to shoot, whether it's a layup or a floater or whatever it may be, or hopefully a teammate's open and I can kick it to them. But when you have to bring this other hand over to support the ball, thus stopping your dribble, you stop your whole move, you stop your whole momentum, and now you're, you're stuck. So for me personally, as someone who depends on a ball bouncing exactly the way I need it to, for it not to bounce, I can only compensate so much for that. I need the ball to be reactive off the ground the way I expect it to be. And if it's not, it, it stops my whole momentum and it throws away my entire strategy. So that's only one specific example of the importance of a quality ball and how you need it to bounce, but you guys already understand what it means to have a ball that doesn't bounce well and how important it is that it does bounce and do what you need it to do, but also take into account the fact that there's so much air in this ball and no matter how much air I put into it, it doesn't bounce any better, that now it's heavy. Right? It's supposed to be like 29 and a half ounces. It's probably more in like in the 40s now. Uh, and I don't even know if that's technically possible, uh, but it's heavy. It doesn't feel like a normal average ball. And not in a like a good quality way, in a way that it just, it doesn't make sense. So when you shoot the ball, right, it, it doesn't come off your hand the way you would expect it to because it's too heavy and it doesn't matter what kind of shot you're shooting it's too heavy it feels too heavy and then the rebound when it comes off of the rim it dies it, it's super heavy it should be way over inflated and have a major super bounce to it but it doesn't so when it comes off of the rim it still kind of dies it dies on the rim it dies on the backboard it dies on the bounce off of the rim on the rebound it just it doesn't perform the way you expect it to and that's not something that you should have to compensate for especially with the $30 ball yeah so that was an air ball as you guys can see uh, <laughs> I usually wouldn't make excuses, but you know, jacket and super heavy ball. Let's try that again. Uh, canals to the grotto, Monet, Rodin's and Picasso's, chandeliers in the fountains, I got those. Let's go, come on! Picasso. Picasso. Bright lights, back at the casino. Rat pack, black jack, bancatino, fur coats, martinis with the vino. Let's go, come on, let's go. Pool out, pulling up in a fresh roll. Cabana's OJ and Prosecco. Havana's and the Cubans all fresh rolled. Let's go, come on. So, I am not exaggerating when I talk about how heavy this ball is. Now, take into account, I'm super rusty. This is really my first time getting out to the court. Uh, this season, but that being said, this ball does not perform the way you would expect it to. I mean, you guys can see for yourselves the way it was hitting the rim, coming off the rim, bouncing off the rim, the backboard of the ground. You guys can tell how heavy this ball is and how it's not bouncing the way you would expect it to. And really, there's no more air. I can't get any more air into this ball. So it's heavy and it doesn't bounce as well as it should. So that's a major, major problem. And yes, I'm super rusty and super out of practice, but it, how am I supposed to get unrusty and in practice with a ball that doesn't perform right? So that's the importance of having a quality ball, which is like, yes, you need to have be made out of good quality material, whether it's 
rubber or composite or leather or whatever it is and you need to have good quality pebbling on the ball and you need to have good grip channels and in theory this ball has all of that stuff it feels really good it, it looks and feels like it should perform excellently but it doesn't and when you come to the court and you're using someone else's ball and it has this kind of deficiency to it there's only so much you can do to compensate it's going to be continuously frustrating that's why when i made my point in my other video about why it's so important to have a good quality ball when it's your ball and you bring it to the court and people recognize it as a good quality ball and then they want to play with your ball how that's a huge advantage for you because you're the one that's most familiar with that ball when you have a bad ball when you have a ball that doesn't perform the way it should it's continuously and unrelentingly frustrating so thank you guys for watching like i said again this Wilson ball, this brand, this line of balls, it, there's nothing wrong with this line, this brand in general. I'm sure I just got the one sort of dud in 10,000 or whatever it may be, but I'm not gonna keep this ball. This ball is going back. I've never returned a ball before. I've always been able to compensate for whatever you know deficiencies a ball may have, but this just is not acceptable. So I'm gonna send this ball back. I'm going to replace it with the Spalding Zio indoor outdoor ball. I probably will try this ball again in the future, but um, because I've already experienced, you know, the feel and the grip and the experience of this ball, minus you know the bad bouncing experience, because I've already had my first impressions of this ball and using this ball. The next one I'm going to do is the Spalding Zio ball, just to experience that ball and see what that ball is all about. You guys will get that first impressions video and the review of that ball. So make sure you hit that bell so you're notified of when those videos come out. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button because that's huge for me. That really helps me out. And uh, yeah, uh, bad luck for me with this ball, but uh, I'll see you guys next week.